And I don't want to talk about worm food, kitten and heels. I really don't. I don't want to talk about a bandit who had multiple failed marriages, who was unhealthy, who had a low value life and subsequently a low value funeral. I don't want to talk about a bandit who croaked on top of a throwback because he was so unhealthy. And I called out the fact that he was so unhealthy that his low value heart simply gave out. I don't want to talk about a bandit who became the father of all bandits to some daddy deprived dick riding struggle bandits who are desperate for a daddy so they'll jump on any dick and cyber serpent that they can find. I don't want to talk about this, but I've got a video here that does a great job of illustrating black women's pathology. Commander, contact your troops. Tell them to move to the higher levels. Very good, sir. It's time. We black men need to stand up. Why? You need to stand up so that the next generation will know we fought. We fought for our position. Execute Order 66. Yes, my lord. Salute and welcome back to Unknown Soldier Radio. This is a chopper! And I'm Dog Tags. Oh, you gotta be a soldier! Yeah. Come on in, pour you a drink, get you something to eat. It's barbecue in there. And if you don't like what's on the menu, we can always cook up a couple of these silverback hyenas. No, I'm not eating no fucking leftover barbecue from yesterday. There's an old saying that goes, never speak ill of the dead, especially when they're right next to you. And let me explain. There's a story in the Bible, whether you believe in the Bible or not, just treat it like a Aesop fable or an old wives tale about the rich man and the poor man. And the poor man is a man by the name of Lazarus. And Lazarus would go to the gates of this rich man's house every day just hoping and begging for something to eat just for any crumb or crumbs to fall off the table of the rich man and even in Lazarus's lowest state of mental physical and spiritual deprivation and degradation it didn't stop the local dogs from licking the wounds or the open sores on Lazarus's body and from the outside looking in, if you were to look at Lazarus, it would appear that he was a leper or had leprosy. Then there came a day, which that day will unfortunately or fortunately come for all of us, depending on how you look at it and your perspective on death that we are or will be appointed to die. And on this particular day, as described in the book of Ecclesiastes 3 and 2, from this imaginary Bible slash Aesop slash wives tell there's a day to be born and there's also a day for you to die so lazarus the beggar and the rich man on this appointed day to death for both of them either made their way to the pearly gates of heaven or the iron gates of hell <laughs> Now, this is where the Bible story or Aesop fable or old wives tale gets interesting because you have the rich man and you have the beggar Lazarus who are both in their appointed places of rest and the rich man can see Lazarus from afar and it's described in the Bible as a chasm slash spiritual gulf between the both of them. And now the rich man is thirsty because he's being tormented in pain. And he asked Abraham if Lazarus could dip his finger in some water and quench his thirst. And Abraham answers the rich man, and I'm gonna paraphrase here. Abraham says, hell no, 
you wouldn't even give Lazarus the beggar a bottle of water while y'all was down on earth and now we're here and y'all appointed places of rest and you want Lazarus to go dip his finger in some water and bring it back to you to cool your tongue because you're in torment. And the rich man says to Abraham, well, hey, look, do me a favor. At least let Lazarus go warn my family of this place so they don't have to come here. And Abraham says, well, hell no, to the now, to the now, now, now again. And then tells the rich man, they have Moses and the prophets to warn them. Let them listen to them. You can't make this shit up. And the rich man said to Abraham, bruh, my bad, broham, if someone from the dead goes to my family, they'll repent, they'll change their ways, they'll finally get some act right. And Abraham said to the rich man, man, if they ain't listen to Moses and all the other prophets and all the other prophets I've sent before, what makes you think they'll be convinced even if somebody that has risen from the dead? When Jesus walked, this is what's called the Lazarus effect. You can't make this shit up. This whole process started with the Lazarus serum. The goal here is simple to bring someone back from the dead. Shout out to Abraham T. He said, bro, Dennis, do you know who was live streaming KS's intro song? Yeah, that's his daughter. Uh, praise God. She's taking over. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of her. I'm happy. I told you I was coming. It's here now. Yes. The legacy of Kevin Samuels continues. And I support it 100%. But right now, let's get back to this business. Because the business goes on. If a dog is willing to lick the wounds of a beggar here on earth in the physical realm, what does that say about the spirit of the person who would take that very same energy and saliva and use it to spit on your grave? You can't make this shit up. Salute! Get to the chopper! from dog tags. Kevin Samuels has died from an apparent heart attack, according to a friend we talked to tonight. We broke the news to you here on The Factor last night. Samuels is best known for dishing out some very controversial relationship advice, but coming down extremely hard, some say on black women specifically. 